Welcome back from the Hollywood Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Marcello Theffer, and I'm over here with the beautiful Lorena Stewart and David Fagan as well. David, I am really excited about your guest you got. Can you tell us who this guy is? Or we can just talk about him like he's not even here. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> this Go is ahead, Brad Fight, and he is from the Service Dog Registrations of America. And I don't know if you guys have seen this in the news, but there are tons of service dog issues coming up. Is it a service dog? Is it not a service dog? We got Paris Hilton that has a dog. She wants to take she it everywhere with her, right? She wants to get it on the plane for free. Don't think it's a service dog, though. Uh, it's a poof poof dog. <laughs> Well, you know, she might she might be a stre you know, emotional stress or something. Maybe she can't afford to pay for the dog to travel. I don't know. She can afford it. Uh, but she's got a dog. Channing Tatum has a service dog. Whoa. Um, look, Brad, thank you for coming yeah. on hey, here. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. that. And thank you for your service. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background first. Uh, so my background's in the United States Marine Corps. Yeah. I uh, ended up uh, deploying into Marja, Afghanistan, uh, hostile territory in southern Helmand province. Mm -hmm. uh, Ended up doing an operation, and wow. uh, my team got attacked. My vehicle uh, got blown up by a 300-pound bomb, mm -hmm. and I woke up weeks later after my team had saved my life and successfully evacuated me out of the battlefield, and I woke up in an army hospital in Germany uh, wow. in critical condition. Woke up uh, due to my injuries and was told I'd never walk again. Mm -hmm. I'd never have full motion of my body. Uh, just, just a lot of limits put on me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thankfully, I, I was able to get to a point where physically I recovered. Uh, mentally was, you know, qu quite a bit harder fight mm -hmm. uh, than, than physically, which, which I never would have expected. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again for your yeah, service. Yeah, thank you. And, Absolutely. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's one of those things that I, I find that even when I say thank you, even as the words come out, it just doesn't seem like enough. It's never it's enough. enough. It's right. never thank enough. Thank you times yeah. a, a thousand yeah. or a million. But you had a service dog. Was that kind of by the book or was that, did people not want to call it a service dog for you? Were you did you not technically qualify back then for a service right. dog? Right. No, so there was a lot of, there's a lot less drama when it came to service animals uh, mm -hmm. when I got my service dog, Duke. But um, what, one, of, one of the biggest things that, um, that got in my way of recovery was when I got diagnosed with this thing called post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. Sure. And there's not a lot of education out there about what's going on. Um, and what a lot of people don't know is, is that there are ways um, to, to make a recovery from this. Mm -hmm. and, and though it's diagnosed as a mental disorder, you know, there's, there's education and there are resources that are provided to help men and women mm -hmm. struggling with post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder, people who have endured traumatic events. And for me, one of the greatest tools I was given was the gift of my service animal. Yeah. I was, uh, I was married, and uh, my, uh, my relationship with my wife got, got so bad, be, mainly because of the nightmares and the night terrors I was experiencing every night. We weren't able to sleep in the same room, um, just really drove a wedge between us. And when I got my service dog, Duke, one of the things my dog was trained to do was wake me up from my nightmares. Oh, wow. And so I'd be able, wow. to, go to, I'd be able wow. to go to sleep at night, and my dog would be able to sense when I was about to have a nightmare and instead of my wife having to reach over and try to wake me up and put herself in a dangerous position because my nightmares got violent a lot of times, mm -hmm. Duke would go over to the light in my room, turn the light on. Wow. Amazing. The, Amazing. the light in the room would wake yeah. me up. Wow. And so that way I'm waking up, I'm not in a dark room. There's no confusion about where I'm at, what's going on. Yeah. It's I wake up, lights on, I'm in my bed, my wife's there, my dog's here. I had another dream. I get up, my dog and I go out in the living yeah. room. You're Relax li and wow. you're listening yeah. to uh, Brad Fight of Service Dog Registration of America. I got to make sure amazing. I get that right. It's a long absolutely. one. Your story is absolutely yeah, amazing, you. and uh, absolutely. I guess one of the heroes of the story is is, is Duke. Yeah. How many yeah. dogs are there like Duke in the country? Oh, so many. Yeah. So many. Um, and and it's it's becoming a a, a bigger topic now. Mm. But unfortunately, the stories that you're hearing about service dogs aren't these life-changing stories about well, like what my service dog did for me and what so many other service dogs are doing, mm -hmm. especially for veterans coming home. Mm -hmm. right. The stories that you're mm -hmm. getting are the lawsuits and the fake animals and mm -hmm. all these things going on and, and service animals really getting a bad name mm -hmm. because of these people trying to take advantage of the system and, wow. and, and service animals almost have kind of become more of a fashion mm -hmm. accessory Mm -hmm. as opposed to what they're designed and created mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. and that's to 
have the specific purpose of aiding their handlers. Let me ask you this. Uh, can any dog or any breed of dog be a service dog or is there a certain breed or? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> I'm glad we asked I'm that. I'm glad Don't you, you asked that. <laughs> hey, thank you. And this is a huge topic right now. Okay. Uh, when it comes to service animals, there are no breed restrictions. And this is huge, especially I have a lot of personal friends of mine and I've encountered this when I'm trying to move into an apartment mm -hmm. and the apartment says, hey, we have breed restrictions and actually even beyond that, we don't even allow pets. Okay, well, first of all, fine line between a pet and a service animal. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to service dogs, there aren't breed restrictions. Mm -hmm. If it's a service animal, that trumps all. One of my great friends, he's a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps, he has a, a, a pit bull named Bugsy. Okay. And, and those get bad names sometimes. They get a bad yeah. rap anyways, yeah. but, but because he's a pit bull mm -hmm. and a service dog, people always want to go immediately and just negate his vest that he's wearing and say, oh, it's a pit bull, uh, not allowed here. Well, he's a service dog. Right. Mm -hmm. He's certified, he's trained to aid me in this task. So regardless of what breed of animal this is, <clears throat> he's a service dog and that trumps. That trumps everything. Everything. Yeah, Brad, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate everything you've done. Uh, we're going to be back in just a quick minute. We've got to take a break here. Otherwise, I would love to just keep going. Oh, but don't go anywhere. Right. Stay right here, and we're going to find out more about how you can get your pet to become a service dog, if it even Absolutely. qualifies. We'll tell you the sure. website. We'll tell you all yeah. the details. You're going to hear it from uh, a man who has a great one himself, uh, Duke, changed his life. Uh, find out how one can change yours.